Hello and welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. In today's video, we'll explore how to use SQLite with Node.js. So the first thing we'll do is install SQLite 3. Now that we have our Node modules and package.json, we can continue. We'll set up a database first. So first, actually, we need to import or acquire our module. Next, we set up a database connection, new SQLite3.database. And the first parameter here is going to be the file the file path where you want to create your database. So I'll just create this in the working directory. And remember to give it a .db extension. Now the important thing to remember here is that if this file does not exist, it's gonna be created. And if it does exist, it's gonna be loaded, all right? So then there's a callback in here that gives an error message. And if there is an error message, then what we'll do is return and print it at the same time. And if not, if it's successful, we'll say connection established. All right, so then what we we'll want to do is write our code over here. But before that, we'll just write the close logic as well. And this just takes uh, another callback. And we'll just copy paste that over here. Connection closed. All right. So let's just run this code once to make sure everything's working. All right, we have our print statements here. We'll just clear that. We can now begin running our code. So the first thing we'll do is create a table using the create table command. We can create a table called users, and this is where I would like to switch to multi-line strings. So I'll use the back tick characters, and then I like to go to multi-line strings so we can define each column each column in the users table on a separate line. So we can do ID. We can make this an integer, a primary key, a unique identifier, and then we can add auto increment as well so, so that we don't need to specify it and it'll automatically increment as we add new users. This is just gonna be a simple table, by the way, where we just store the information for some users, okay? Then we can do name. We can just do something like email We'll just give them the text field and age integer not null. So because they're not null, they're compulsory and not optional. And anytime we try to insert a, a record, it must have these three fields. Otherwise, it'll throw an error. Okay. So now here's the thing. I'll run this code. I could run this code and it's going to run. Okay. But if I run it again, it's going to give me an error, error because it's already created. And if you run this command again, it's gonna, you know, throw an error. So what we'll do is if not exists, and voila. So what's gonna happen now is that if the table already exists, this command will not run. So I just ran the code and we have no error, okay? Alternatively, you could have just commented this out, but that's not, I mean, that's an option. All right, so what we can do now is well, you need to understand something, is that this run function is actually asynchronous. So if we, for example, do another db.run here, where we insert something using the insert into command, insert into users, so on and so forth. Now, if we, if we just write this command out fully, the problem is that this table, assuming that it doesn't exist, okay, we'll just delete this file. So assuming that it does not exist, this is gonna throw an error. And you know what, let me just write this, write this whole thing out and you'll understand it better when I actually do it. So over here, we'll do name, email, age. Okay, um, I'm just gonna make this multi-line again. And you know what, actually this is where it's a better idea to just put it into a separate line if it's getting too confusing. And we'll just do it a single line this way. Values. And then these question marks, which are placeholders, because this is a parameterized query. What this means is that it doesn't take the values directly. Okay, we're not going to put the actual values here. We're going to put them in later. What we're going to do basically is define a list. Then what we do is pass in the query and pass in the values. And then it matches the values to these to these placeholders. So John goes into the first one and it's like it's sequential. So the second one, the second value goes into this, the second placeholder and so on and so forth. So all these need to match the name and the first placeholder and the first value over here. 
all three, like the order is very important. The order of columns, the order of placeholders, and the order of the values. Okay, and this basically helps prevent SQL injections and so on. You can look that up later, SQL injections. That's an important thing if you're making a database application. So here's the thing. I, I did all this to basically illustrate the point that if I delete the tutorial.db file and then I run this code, it's going to be an error. And that's because this is asynchronous. So before this even finishes executing, this is going to execute and um, you know there's going to be no user's table. So let me just delete that again and show you how to fix this. So what we do here is use a callback. Now, alternatively, you could also use like the fetch and await system in JavaScript. That's up to you. But the callbacks is the native approach used in SQLite 3, and it's the feature provided by them. So that's what we're going to use. There's also the error parameter here, if you ever want to use that in here. Like if not error, then run this code, so on. So if I run this code now, what we'll get is our file but we have no way of verifying whether this actually worked. So what I'm going to do is, well, I could just chain another command over here. And again, this usually all this takes an error parameter. What I can do here, well, first of all, I'm just going to comment this out, actually. Let's just comment this one out. Okay. And what we'll do is write an entirely new command, select all from users. And that's pretty much it. And I forgot that this doesn't use the run command, it uses the all command, or it uses get. Get for a single record, if, if you want to get a single record, all for all records. I just like using all. So what this does is error, and it returns another parameter called rows. Rows containing the rows that it retrieved. So console.log rows. So if I print this out, voila, here we go. There's the record that we entered. So let's just add in one or two more users, shall we? I'll just change these a bit, like Smith, Smith over there, and 30. Now if we comment that out and comment this over there, so we now get these two fields. Great, right? Now we've explored two different things, how to insert or three, create table, insert, select. Next up is uh, update. So what we'll do is DB, we'll write a separate query for this in a separate variable, because this is gonna be a bit of a long query. So update users, then I like to put this on a separate line, set name is equal to a placeholder. Then over here, we'll do where name or you know what, instead of name, we'll use ID because that's the primary key. So that's what we should use, ideally. Then we'll do db.run. Then we'll pass the query in. Now this is where we pass in parameters. You can do the same thing over here, by the way, but we just didn't use any parameters in the select statement. You can do like select where uh, ID is equal to two, for example, if you wanted the second user. And then you could pass in over here the ID too, like that. Just just information. Um, but we're going to do that over here, actually. We're going to pass in the ID. I'm actually seeing a problem here. We should not be changing the ID. We can use it as, you know, where. We can use it as an identifier, but we can't change the ID itself. So, for example, let's change the age of the person with a specific ID. So, for the age, we can specify 31. And for the ID, we can specify 2. So it's going to change the age of Smith from 30 to 31. And why Smith? Because he has the ID of two, okay? Where ID is equal to placeholder, which is this value. And there, problem solved. So if I run this again, there we go. Age is 31, perfect. Let's explore the one thing that we haven't discussed yet, deletion. So I'm going to, just uncomment that out and write the delete cause over here. Now the delete statement is pretty simple. So we'll just write it in one go, delete from users and we need to specify which user. So we'll do where ID is equal to question mark placeholder, then the value, which is two, then the callback error, 
and then we can just paste that in here and yeah that's pretty much it there we go boom user is gone so that's the end of this video if you guys are interested in seeing future videos like this and if you have any interesting concepts or challenging concepts you want to see in future videos do let me know in the comment section below all right see you guys in the next video